Beginner's Guide for This Land is My Land. The game is available on Steam. I recommend keeping a notebook handy to jot down the controls for quick reference. I also recommend before opening the game to have a list of possible names for your chief and for your horse. Your horse is your sidekick, your buddy, and will always be there for you. Your name and your horse's name come with bonuses which you get to choose. Click the Start Resistance button. I strongly encourage you to start with Classic Mode. This will help you learn the controls and mechanics of the game. Once you reclaim 100% of your land, you can use this resistance to provide your new games with all the materials needed to survive in Immersive Mode. Resources are hard to come by in the beginning, so do yourself a favor and start in Classic Mode or Custom Mode with a few changes. You can mail yourself pelts, guns, ammo, and healing items, so this will make the more challenging Immersive Mode easier. Tweaking some settings in Custom Mode is the best way to begin, in my opinion. Let's go over some of the settings which are customizable. Leave in the Tutorial, which is somewhat weak, but can be helpful. Reputation is completely up to you. It has pros and cons. If you want to be bad, leave it in. However, a bad rep might make other tribes not want to join you. This is entirely up to you. I normally turn it off. You may get an XP bonus with it on. Leave in world bosses. They are fun and you can get some nice rewards from them. I would avoid the boss rush. Leave in the weather. Sometimes intimidating in the rain is actually easier than no rain. And the sandstorms can hide you as well. The most helpful customization is to make the day and night longer. Put it on the longest setting. This will make it so much easier at night to intimidate your enemies. The days and nights won't feel so rushed. I would leave enemy reaction time to default mode because this resistance will be your feeder game to other resistances you create. Playing the game once through is highly recommended before beefing up the difficulty. Realistic damage is not easy to deal with at first, so having completed the game once will give you a much better chance to get through the higher difficulty. Bonding with your horse. Use Z to form a bond with your horse. As I said before, your horse will be your constant companion and is very helpful in tough situations. You can't change his appearance after creation, so pick something you really like at the beginning. Give him a good name and the horse will give you some added bonuses. I always choose weight because I carry a bunch of stuff like extra weapons, a gold pocket watch to tell time, extra campfires, my high quality guns and extra ammo. Your horse will level up so his speed, weight, and health will increase the more you ride him. In order to level him up, you need to give your horse certain items. Pressing Z will open his inventory, and this is also where you see what level he is and what you need to level him up. Your horse can get hurt, like falling off a cliff or getting shot, so having some hay to heal him is helpful. Always best to keep your horse out of battle range. The first thing you do on the train is to pick a name. I like realistic names, but choose what you like. You get bonuses for choosing certain names. I personally think increased weight and extra skill points are the best starting options. I think it's wise to avoid any negative names because the loss of skills can be too much to overcome, especially because XP is hard to come by. Weight comes in handy when looting and carrying weapons and ammo. In the beginning, you'll want to loot just about everything. And of course, extra XP is never a bad choice. Begin by choosing normal start mode. I am not going through the tutorial, but I suggest you follow the tutorial and watch the videos. 
Once you get your medium bow and arrows, equip them using the one key to select them and the medium arrows. It's better than the wooden bow. Recommended starting skills. I highly recommend starting with heal over time. You can eat food to recover, but it takes a while. It's easier to get back into the game when you heal while riding to your next location. The next best starting skill is sneak. In the beginning, sneaking and intimidation will get you further in the game, with less headaches than if you just go start attacking the invaders. Second or third best starting skill is reduced intimidation time. I put all early skill points into reduced intimidation and sneak. Then, I invest skill points into crafting war bows and heavy arrows. I skip over the medium. For me, the war bow is the best in the game. I also put skill points into stone throw. This skill is fun. I made a previous video about stone throw. It's nice because you can equip a stone at any time. No need to collect them or carry them in your inventory. Throw stone to knock someone out is simply brilliant though it can cause enemies to become aware of your presence. But give it time, and they will forget about it. If you bought the Founder's Edition, the Ancestor's Bow is also a wise starting bow. You can use the stun arrows, but you will need to get a headshot for it to work. I rarely use the stun arrows, but some players use them effectively.
keeping your camps happy. You will need to get the skill for improved hunting, so you can loot animal parts like horns, tusks, and hides. These are located under Chief, in the skill menu. You can buy the items you need to level up your camps in the trade window, if you have enough trade tokens. You will get some items by completing social events. You can ask in chat for items to level up your camps. Most players are helpful and are willing to share items you need. Press the T button to bring up the chat menu. You should always keep food in your camps along with bows and arrows. If your camp is overcrowded, they will leave. The tribe only hunts animals using bows and arrows. Getting groceries from farms is how you level up warriors. Completing objectives gives you skill points and helps with game management. Some objectives are more important than others. When it says to interrupt the wood gatherers, do it, to slow down the enemy town. Try to do these when they pop up. I had a situation once where I ignored these objectives. This was a mistake because the town grew very large and another town was built beside it. The new town was close to the railroad tracks, so the game was basically lost and I couldn't overcome the amount of invaders in that area. You may want to go to the town in the construction phase and intimidate the enemies within it. Then don't burn it. This will give you a break from town patrols. Skill points are hard to come by, so hone in on what you want to do. I recommend intimidating as much as possible in the beginning. Once you get past 75% of your land back, you can become more warlike if you choose. If you start out wanting to kill, it will make the game more difficult and harder to get more warriors. I choose rifles over pistols because I can use rifles at long range. This is especially helpful for picking off some of the bosses. In most of my games, I have zero pistol skills and maxed out rifles. I like Lancaster rifle you get from the British Army leftover boss. I also like the Teppo you get from Walken Jones. The Teppo is an awesome sniper rifle. I put XP into weapon damage, as this increases your warrior's damage as well. Max out bow skill as soon as possible, also weapon damage and rifle. You will use less ammo with higher skills. It increases your warrior's skill as well. Pick and choose what you want to craft. You will need rope, you can make rope from collecting flax, and wood for everything. So have your tribe always gather these. I also pick war bow, heavy arrows, toxic arrows. These are my main weapons. Toxic arrows are fantastic.
Stone throw. Use E key, choose stone throw, hold down G to get the red circle on your target. Once the reticle turns really small, release G key to knock out your enemy. Tomahawk throw works the same way and is also a good choice. If you kill using tomahawk, try removing the dead body so it won't be noticed and alert the camp. <laughs>